Now this winter, above all, it's really important to take care of our general health. Yes, it is. So how do we do it is the question. Well, GP Nuala O'Connor works with the HSC and has lots of advice for us. And Nuala's here today. Nuala, tell us your kind of special areas of interest first, I suppose. Well, I suppose first and foremost, I'm a GP. I've been a GP up uh, in, in Cork uh, at Elmwood Medical Practice uh, in Frankfield for the last 30 years. Uh, but my areas of interest really are about uh, preventing the spread of infections. What, I've been telling people to wash their hands and cough into their, into their elbows for many years now, <laughs> but also about using antibiotics wisely. Um, so, uh, because the antibiotic resistance is another problem that we have. Mm -hmm. right, what should we be doing now to look after our health for the rest of the winter? Well, I think it's all about having a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've all got a little bit cooped up because of COVID, and I think particularly a lot of, of older people or people with chronic medical conditions, you know, they've been trying to uh, take heed of all the public health advice. So there's lots of it there at the moment. And right? there's lots of it, and I think it, you can kind of it can kind of get in in your bit, and you can end up being a bit cooped up at home. So it's important to have a plan. So it's a plan for your for your physical health, but also a plan for your mental health. So it it, it really it's about. Um, getting up, getting active, maintaining your physical activity. If you can, get out for a walk every day, uh, maybe do some, a little bit of exercise, even exercise around, around the house, but also about keeping your mind active and staying connected with people mm -hmm. because we know that a lot of people have suffered from anxiety and depression, you know, even people who've never suffered from it before uh, during COVID. So making sure that you stay connected with people, even if you can't physically meet people, there's lots of, of other means of staying connected. So it's a lonely time as well for people. But older people, Nula, for you know the people that are, are maybe isolating a little bit more, they're cocooning, or for people who are higher risk, like diabetics, asthma, arthritis, people with, with you know those kind of diseases and ailments, is there any specific advice for them? Okay, so you really have to be careful and be on top of managing uh, your health, particularly if you've got chronic medical conditions. One of the things that we've noticed is that people are a little bit afraid, so they're afraid to go to their GP or to go for their hospital appointment, uh, but it's important that you keep on top of your illness. So what you need to do is if you were to do a checkup, do go and see your GP because we can see you safely, but if you're very nervous about coming into the surgery, we can do a video or telephone consultation and we can e even email your prescription uh, to a pharmacy for you. But sometimes people you know, they need to have their blood pressure checked, they need to have their heart listened to, they may need to have some blood tests done. Um, medication, so so in the, the rush over Christmas, we always find some people have forgotten, uh, you know, to get their inhalers, get their diabetic meds, whatever. So it's important to make sure you've got everything to hand. Uh, it's also to, to make a, a plan. If you do become unwell, have all the phone numbers to hand, you know, your GP's number, the out of hours, maybe friends or family, who's going to take you if you feel unwell, you know, if you don't feel up to driving yourself. So it's just about making a plan about how you're going to manage your health this winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nola, what about people who are working, say, on the front line or family members or carers? How should they take care of themselves uh, to make sure that they can take care of other people? Mm. Again, it's all the same things. I think we all have to, um, obviously if you're working on, on the front line, if you're busy, and particularly if you're minding and caring for COVID patients, mm -hmm. you do need to be able to switch off physical exercise very important things to switch off whether it's reading a book it's meeting up with friends when, when it's on the tv all the time no. when it's in the newspapers it's on the radio and uh, it's just it surrounds you so in one way you have to kind of break through that circle i think yeah i think you do and i think you know you, you could actually spend morning noon and night listening to it so i think you just need to choose maybe one point in the day to catch up on the important bits choose a reliable source of information and then apart from that you know most of the advice doesn't change on a regular basis so you know, keep up all your own interests that you had already and maybe if you can't physically go and do and participate in those interests maybe you can do them um, as part of something that that's online but you're you know reading a book mm -hmm. uh, getting out exercising whatever it is you the normally old had the old reliables <laughs> yeah the always old reliables. helpful yeah. for a reason i Certainly. suppose there's a lot of people at the moment i suppose going to be extra concerned we're in flu season we all get head colds at this time of year anyway how can you identify the difference between a common cold or a flu and COVID-19, that's going to be something people are going to be extra concerned well, about, of course. Well, the shorter answer, answer is that it's a little bit difficult. Mm. But there is, the, the HSE have produced this really lovely booklet called Keep It Well This Winter. And inside in that, there's, there's actually a table which goes down through it. Um, you know, the, 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 the common mm -hmm. symptoms that, 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 that people can get. Uh, so the, 
the cardinal things or the main things that you get that would distinguish COVID from flu is that you tend to get quite a high fever over 38. You get a, a new onset type of cough. Uh, you can get quite short of breath and particularly a loss or a change in your sense of taste or smell. You don't tend to get that with the actual influenza itself. Um, but actually, you know, you can kind of get anything really. Yeah. You know, yeah. Unless it's anything other than just a little simple runny head, co runny, um, head cold or, or sore throat, there is a chance that it could be COVID. So the thing to do is to take yourself out of circulation, stay at home, phone your GP, we can talk you through it and then decide whether or not you need to go for a COVID test. Mm -hmm. um, it's important then if you are going for a COVID test that you actually self-isolate. So self-isolate means that you stay in your room and you because mm -hmm. you don't want to pass it on to other members in your house until you have that test done. And then if that test is, is negative, well, then you probably have one of the other viruses mm -hmm. that's going around. So you just wait for maybe about 48 hours until your symptoms have gone. Then it's OK for you to go, go back out and, and to meet with people. Mm -hmm. And if you do have the flu or do get the flu, what should you do? Well, the flu is a viral infection and we all know that um, viral infections are things that we can get better by ourselves using our own immune system. There's a lot so, of people who go for antibiotics and things yeah, like this, absolutely. don't they? Well, that well, seems you, to be the first port of call for lots of people. Yeah, well, She's well, the woman who knows the answer. <laughs> well, I would hope now that that's not the first port of call yeah. anymore. I hope we've done enough for yeah. people to understand that um, antibiotics uh, don't work on colds and flu. Mm -hmm. So antibiotics are magic bullets. They're absolutely brilliant for treating well, bacterial infections yeah. yeah yeah so if you have a bacterial infection like a urinary tract infection or a bad chest infection they're really good and we need to keep them good because modern medicine a lot of the things that we do in modern medicine we couldn't do if we didn't have antibiotics a lot of the cancer care a lot of the major operations that are that are being done they're all being supported by that so for viral infections i mean the good thing about viral infections is that what you need to do is stay at home mm -hmm. so you're not passing it on to anybody else um and you rest up you take plenty of fluids um you take paracetamol or ibuprofen for the aches and mm -hmm. pains and and the temperature um and write and, it out and exactly mm -hmm. exactly so and and that's days. Days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, that's it. just the way it is. Now, look, we've been talking about everybody, the whole world has been talking about COVID-19 since, you know, early last year. We should know, I would hope, how to prevent the spread of it. But just in case it's in the booklet, I believe it's page 12. Um, <laughs> can you talk us very quickly through it? Nina? OK, uh, so this is um, uh, COVID, like many other viral uh, infections, it's, it's a respiratory infection. OK, mm -hmm. so there's only two ways that you can get it. So we're far apart here. But if we were close together and if I coughed into your face, OK, mm -hmm. then the, the droplets of it could get in through your nose, your eyes, your nose or your mouth and, and get into you. So that's one way that you get it. The second way is these. OK, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, if people are coughing into their hands and then you know they're touching the phone, they're touching all sorts of things. And then if somebody's recently, you know, put some virus droplets on something and you pick them up and you put these up here. So that's why I'm always saying yeah. so you keep these down. So if, you keep them if you're clean. eating a sandwich, it will go in like that. Exactly. Or it's if like, you're rubbing your nose or if you rub your eyes, that's how it'll get into Or like, you know, if, if you don't wash your hands before you eat, like you're your mother always told yes. you to do. You know, it's, yeah. it's all the basics. None Mommy's of this is right <laughs> all along. <laughs> None of this is actually new, no. Di. We've been no. telling people That's to do this for a long time. So it's stay at home if you feel unwell. Uh, wear your mask mm -hmm. uh, when you're out, particularly on, on shops, retail places. But, you know, it's very Our crowded out on the streets yeah, at, yeah. at the moment. Uh, make sure to sanitise your hands regularly. Keep your hands away from your face. And if you do feel a cough or a sneeze coming on, it's just to turn away mm -hmm. and cough or sneeze into your elbow. And those, and I know, you know, everyone's talking about the COVID vaccine mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the great hope. We can't but give it, our it, it is only yeah. one yeah. part of the toolbox. We still have and to do everything Until else. we get to the situation where about 70% of us have actually been vaccinated. It's, it's the old reliables that we all know about. Um, um, Wash your hands and cover your face and so on. And, and stay and, away. And, and two keep, meters. Keep, keep, your keep distance. that distance. And learn. It's all about learning how to enjoy uh, each other's company uh, safely. Yeah. Stay apart. <laughs> Just a, a little bit. Thank you so much Thank for you, that, Nula. That's so informative. It's stuff I hope we know most of that, that end bit anyway, all already to, to stop the spread. But thank you so much for that. And for more information, go to hsc.ie and those leaflets are currently being delivered to 2 million households across the country. So you'll have that in the, in the door in a little while. It'll help you keep strong this winter.